That was footage from my tour with Bronnie at the start of the year, and I am James Lind of James Lind Photography, and today I'm going to give you five tips on how to step up your concert photography game. Concert photography is where my photography journey all really began. I owe it all to this girl, what up, James? Chrissy Costanza of Against the Current. It was Against the Current that inspired me to try out with concert photography. I remember seeing one of their first UK shows in Manchester back in 2014 and I was stood at the stage in the crowd, my arm was just up in the air, you know, rocking out as you do. And in that moment, Chrissy, the singer, just reached out, grabbed my hand. And I just remember in that moment, just it was as if time stood still and I had this weird sort of epiphany that I need to be photographing moments like this. I went home, bought my first camera and stuff, and it was actually Chrissy herself who got me into some of my earliest shows to practice, build up a portfolio and stuff, and the rest is kind of history from there. So I owe pretty much my entire photography career to those guys. So Chrissy, Dan, Will, if any of you are seeing this, I'd love to work with you sometime. It'd be, it'd be great fun. From the moment I started with concert photography, I was in love with it. It is so much fun, but it is harder work than a lot of people realize, at least to do it well. So here are my five tips for those who are aspiring to take their concert photography to that next level. The first tip, choose the right camera body. Now, I don't want to be one of those sort of camera snobs that says that you need to spend a lot of money on your equipment. But what I will say is that the more you're willing to invest, the better the result will become. It's kind of the difference between chopping down a tree with an ax or a chainsaw. You're gonna achieve the same result, whichever tool you use, but one of them's gonna do it a lot easier. And it's kind of the same with camera bodies. If you're willing to spend a few thousand pounds on one of the high-end camera bodies, it's gonna produce a really, really beautiful image, nice and easy. They have really good sensors on them, which are perfect for low lighting. But that said, you don't have to spend thousands of pounds to still get good photos. And I want to really emphasize that point. You can make do with cheaper equipment, particularly camera bodies. I remember my first camera body was a Canon 100D and that only cost me about 250 pounds. And I was shooting with a kit lens, which granted wasn't very good itself, but I, I quickly upgraded my lenses. But the camera body itself always performed very well. Sure, if it's a little bit dark, the photos do start to come out grainy and that's kind of the compromise with cheaper cameras is you just have to tolerate a bit more grain in the low light. All you need is a camera with a good sensor that you can shoot raw on and that's really all you need when you're picking a camera. But if you want to take it seriously, if you really want to take it to the next level, I can definitely recommend investing in a nicer camera. When I stepped up from my 100D to my Canon 5D Mark III, the difference was so noticeable like the quality of my work just instantly stepped up so it is worth the investment if you do want to take it to that next level but all you need is just a good camera that's got a good sensor for low light that's the important thing if it can handle high iso without too much grain you, you're gonna be on to a winner there tip number two is to know your lenses the type of lens that you're going to be using will affect the overall sort of feel and aesthetic of your images. Wide angle lenses, which I would say is about 35 millimeter or lower, create this really sort of striking, dynamic and energetic kind of shots. Wide angle shots tend to make all the elements in the composition feel much further away from each other than they actually are, which gives you this grand sense of space that 
helps make your subject just feel so much larger than life. I personally love shots taken between about 16mm and 35mm, they just, they always look so, so energetic and dynamic and it's just, you really get a feel for the space and the energy in the room that way. You can go wider than 16mm, plenty of people have done it, but you do start to get into fisheye territory with that, which isn't my personal style, but if that's what you want to do, do it, play around with it. From 50mm and above, you start getting into the more sort of telephoto end of the spectrum. With these lenses, the elements in the photo feel closer together, and that creates a much more sort of intimate feel with your work. Great for sort of close-up portraits of the performers, absolutely great for that kind of thing, and just capturing sort of like the expressions on their faces. Bearing these kind of things in mind when you select your lenses means that you can choose your lenses depending on what kind of feel you want to be going for. Do you want the sort of the wide angle look with all of the energy or do you want something a bit more intimate and passionate? Do you want to focus in on the faces? Choose your lenses depending on that. You will also to an extent have to select lenses based on your shooting conditions. If you're shooting in a big venue like an arena for instance then you're kind of stuck with telephoto lenses for the most part because the performers are usually on such a high stage so far away from you that you need the zoom just to get a, like a, a wider kind of shot. Another thing you've got to bear in mind with the lenses is that you need lenses that are called fast lenses. These are lenses that have wide apertures. The aperture is kind of like the pupil of the camera lens, it's what lets the light through to the sensor. Obviously if you're shooting in dark concert venues having something that has a wider pupil or aperture will let more light in, meaning that you can just shoot a lot easier. The caveat to that is that lenses with wide apertures, things of like f2.8 or lower, tend to be a little bit more expensive unless you get prime lenses. As with the camera values, if you're willing to invest, you really do see the results. My go-to lens is the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens, which cost a lot of money, but honestly, it's like my bread and butter lens. I just use it for everything, so I've really got my money's worth from it. It's so diverse it covers the sort of the wide angle range through to the sort of the more portraiture range so you've also got the more sort of budget options like a 50 millimeter f 1.8 which is a really popular startup lens because it's so cheap mine cost me about 100 quid i recommend that and if you start shooting bigger venues like arenas then getting something like a 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 is a worthy investment but again very expensive if you can't afford lenses with wider apertures then again like with the camera bodies work with what you can afford you just have to sort of take the hit and, and compromise you might have to work with a bit more grain you might struggle a lot more in really dark venues but work with it if you shoot raw you can you can salvage a lot with raw photos so Tip number three is to anticipate your shot. Concerts are incredibly fast paced and you've got to keep up with it. The best way I found to do that is to be anticipating what's about to happen rather than just photographing what is happening. If you're trying to photograph what is happening, you're gonna keep missing things. So whenever I'm pushing the shutter button, I'm taking a photo of something that I've already planned ahead three seconds before, and I'm already thinking ahead three seconds to what the band is about to do. I tend to sort of use my peripheral vision quite a lot so that I'll be shooting but a lot of the time you sort of shoot with one eye shut but I keep them both open so I can see what other band members are doing and if I see that someone's moving in a way that looks like it's about to make an interesting shot I can then quickly get in position and be there ready to snap it and you've just got to get into this habit it does come with experience it's really difficult to begin with but the more you sort of photograph concerts the more it becomes second nature to you and you'll just begin to sort of understand when people move in certain ways they're about to do something cool and you'll be able to get yourself into a position for it. A lot of artists will have like a signature move that they perform at some point during the set that might be like a jump or a backbend or something. I remember one time I was photographing Hey Violet and I'd seen other photographers capture Rena's like signature move and I didn't know when in the set it was going to play but I just kind of sensed it coming and I was able to get myself in the prime position to capture this shot which to this day is still one of my favorite shots. That's just the trick, you've just got to sort of anticipate things in advance. Tip number four is to remember to get a variety of shots. In the beginning there were so many times when I would focus too much on 
just one performer, usually the singer, because they're usually the most charismatic, they usually draw in a lot of your attention. And you get home and you look at the set and you're like, I completely forgot to photograph the guitarist or whatever. And you, you just have hundreds of photos of the singer that all look kind of the same. And when they all look the same, there's not a whole lot you can do with that. You can use like one close up photo of the singer and that's pretty much it. If they all look the same, there's so little value to that kind of set. So remember to get a variety of shots. What I do is I go with a system in mind. Normally you get to photograph the first three songs of a set. So I will spend the first song focused in purely on the singer and what they're doing. I will then spend the second song mixing it up with the guitarist, the bassist, the drummer, making sure I've got those kind of shots. And then in the third song, I will just sort of wing it and fill in the gaps of what I feel I've missed out on, on the first two songs. If I have access all areas, which you will only have if you're working with the band or the venue, but if I have access all areas, I will then like circle around to the back of the room, get some crowd shots from the back, and then make my way back and get some shots from the stage and stuff to make sure I've got lots of different angles. But even if you don't have access all areas and you only get to photograph those first three songs, just, just remember to focus on the different band members and keep moving around, you know, unless you're stuck in the crowd because there's no photo barrier. If you've got a photo pit and you can move around, move around mix up your angles, try different things. What you don't want is hundreds of photos of everyone looking the same. Remember to get like the portrait shots, the wide angle shots, get shots with multiple band members in. If you can get a crowd shot, you know, really mix up the, the, the variety of shots that you're getting because ultimately bands and publications will have so much more use for that than they will just a dozen photos of themselves. Like no band wants a dozen photos that are all just portraits of their own face from a show. They want a variety of things because they can post that on social media, they have dozens of social media posts that they can make of that, and it just makes your set so much more interesting. So remember to create variety in your shots. Tip number five is to just edit your photos. I see so many amateur concert photographers just taking photos and then uploading them, and honestly, a lot of the time, photos from concerts that are just straight out of the camera they just don't look that good. The lighting's very difficult to work with. It can be very harsh. It can just look, they'll be overexposed, underexposed. You'll get like the weird sort of harsh red lighting that just destroys all detail or weird things like that. And they just don't look that good out of the camera. Don't get me wrong, sometimes they do, but let's be honest, nine times out of 10, or even 99 times out of 100, they just look a bit, just a bit flat, a little bit bland. And just running them through Lightroom will really help you sort of bring out what's great about that image. And you don't have to go wild with it, just a few sort of minor color adjustments and exposure adjustments will step up your photo so much. And this is why I advocate shooting in RAW, because RAW photos will capture more light information than just a standard JPEG file, which really gives you more to play around with, which you need when you've got such wild lighting conditions. Like the amount of times that I've been shooting a concert and photos will come out overexposed or underexposed, just because you'll get your set a setting and then the lighting will change and you just, you just work with it. And because I shoot in RAW, I'm able to fix most overexposed files or underexposed files. Some go a bit too far, but you just throw them away and pick the ones that work. But by shooting in RAW, you can really just very easily step up the quality of your work. The extent to which you do the editing is personal taste. You can be very sort of photojournalistic about it and just tweak the colors and exposures, white balance and stuff, just to make sure that the image still looks real, but is just enhanced. Or you can go the direction that I tend to lean towards, which is a bit more sort of fine art, which, you know, I'll really sort of play around with the colors, the overall sort of vibe of an image. And just, just I will, I will generally take it just to a different level. I want to create really memorable individual images. How you do it is entirely up to you. I am gonna be putting out some tutorials on how you can edit your concert photos, particularly in awkward lighting conditions. Keep your eyes for those. Once they're out, I will pin them to the end of this video, so they'll be in the, in the end credit card thing, so you can just click straight through. But I definitely recommend editing your photos at least a little bit, because it will improve them, I promise. It will step them up a bit. And if you can't afford to invest in Lightroom and Photoshop, there are other alternatives out there. Most camera brands will have their own editing software that you usually get for free because you bought the camera. I started off with the, the Canon, I can't even remember what it was called, but there was like a Canon editing software that came for free when I bought the camera. And you just enter the, the camera's like reference number and it activates it for you. And they could be a good place to start. But I do, I do recommend Lightroom and Photoshop. They are, 
they're great tools to use. But yeah. So those are my five tips on how you can improve your concert photography. If you find that helpful, be sure to click the little thumbs up because it helps get that video out to more people who may find it helpful. Subscribe for more. Like I said, I've got some more tutorials coming out soon. And just play around with it. Have some fun, develop your style and see where, where the journey takes you. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.